Fellow auto detailers, welcome to the show that features interviews with today's most successful auto detailers. This is the Auto Detailing Podcast. Here's your host, Jimbo Balaam. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to this episode of the Auto Detailing Podcast. I'm Jimbo, your host, and today is a great episode with Joseph Nusifora. Hopefully, I said that right. I possibly could have butchered that. Um, Anyway, he is a member of the Detailer Inner Circle from Australia. Um, And part of being, when you are a part of the Detailer Inner Circle, actually do two additional podcasts per month, every month. Um, And don't worry, if you just sign up for the Detailer Inner Circle, you can get all the previous uh, or the past podcast episodes that I've done. But what's unique about those podcast episodes is there is a topic, but there's also um, a Q&A time and you could call in and answer your questions right there live on the spot. Um, and Joseph being one of those um, called in and we had a great interaction on one of our our live podcast calls, part of the Detail Inner Circle. And so I had messaged him and said, man, that was so awesome talking about the new products at SEMA, whatever. Why don't we do a regular podcast and kind of bring your story to the masses? So that's what this episode is. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. A lot of people are getting excited, interested, people that are in the Detailer Inner Circle. I'm meeting up with more and more of them in person, talking about it. They're implementing the things. It is a definite game changer. And the coolest part is there's nothing currently like it in the detailing industry. So if you're looking to take your detailing business to the next level, whether you own a shop, whether you're mobile, whether you're just starting out, whether you're a seasoned vet of the industry, don't worry. It's not just me that runs the detail inner circle. In my experience, I actually have teamed up with a master marketer and a gentleman named Pete Mitchell who has marketed hundreds of millions of dollars in... um, or has done hundreds of millions of dollars in marketing. Um, and so I've teamed up with him to give a full experience. So hope you guys will check that out, detailerinnercircle.com, and enjoy this episode. All right, welcome to this episode of the Auto Detailing Podcast. I'm Jimbo, your host, and today I have a very special guest, and not just a special guest because he's in the Detailer Inner Circle, uh, but because he's also from a place that I really, really want to go really bad. And that guest is Joe uh, Nusifora. Did I get it right? Yep, spot on. Nice. And his uh, his company is Clean Getaway Car Detailing in Sunshine, Queensland, uh, in the country of Australia. So, Joe, I appreciate you waking up bright and early for this uh, and really just appreciate your time. No worries. Thanks for having me. Of course. Of course. I just – oh, man. Everything from your guys' accent to just – it seems like – one of the most beautiful places in the whole entire world. Um, I got to make it down to Australia one of these days. Um, the biggest hindrance for me, other than maybe the money to get there, is the flight. I like dread being on an airplane that long. Yeah, you should just like not watch movies for a while so that when you do go on the flight, <laughs> you can just catch up. Right. And it gets a lot quicker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. true. I, I, my thing is like, okay, if I fly first class, it wouldn't be that bad. Right, because you could probably like lay down. But then, have you ever looked at how much a first class first class ticket from like LAX to? It's it's a little bit. (laughs) I'm like, all right, still got to save considering I have five people in my family. But hey, I can sit in first class. They could sit in the back. Anyway, that's (laughs) not what this podcast is about. But as everyone knows, and Joe, as you probably know as well, tangents are my favorite. Um, Yeah. But why don't we talk about you? Give us a little bit of background on you. Uh, how you got started in detailing and kind of take your time and just kind of give us give us the rundown on who you are yeah awesome so um yeah my name's joe uh and we're on the sunshine coast uh in queensland which is just above this the capital city of uh of the state brisbane uh and um yeah so i've uh, been running clean getaway car detailing for since um 2010 july 2010 uh, so uh, just over eight years. And, uh, you know, I have not always been into car detailing. Uh, I think a lot of guys start out that way. I've been into cars to a certain extent, and that would have been influenced by my uncle, who was a, uh, who is a mechanic, uh, and he was always into cars. And he had this awesome, I thought it was awesome, a Holden um, a Commodore Ute, and he had souped it up. So it was 
very powerful, fast, loud, all those things. And so are those, you know, things, here, sorry to interrupt. Sorry. Yeah, I had you're to break right. in there. Are those, those are like one of the most popular cars in Australia, right? Well, they were until okay. we stopped making cars in Australia as of, um, I think it was last year or this year, but yeah, so it was Australian made, you know, owned by GM. And those are the um, kind of like, it's a car, but kind of a truck, I guess in the States we had like an (laughs) El Camino, which would be like the closest thing to it. Is, is that right? Um, sort of. It's like a sedan. Sedan. Chopped. (laughs) Right. And with like a a train in the back, it's really a, a pointless sort of car. It's, it's a play car, I believe. That's my opinion anyway. Okay. People would disagree. Yeah. Um, they so, cost more than, than the sedan or the saloon, even though there's only it. two seats. Yeah, so yes, figure. two seats. So it is the car that I'm thinking of. And, and for those in the States that aren't familiar, uh, and I'm sorry to totally derail you, and people You're are right. probably yelling at me like crazy, but it looks like if if they were to make an El Camino, but like in 2018, this is what that car looks like. So just to give a frame of reference, yeah, yeah, exactly. it, yeah. it looks just like an El a little, Camino. A like little a, more rounded. Yes, a more rounded, <laughs> more curves. updated El Camino. So yeah. proceed. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Wanted no, to give that's all right. There. Yeah, so that, that really, um, I think, got me into cars um, and got into, like, you know, the, the Australian rivalry between Holden and Ford. Um, and But I've never been a massive, like, you know, uh, mechanics sort of guy into the mechanical side of things. Just, just the looks. Um, and, and, you know, the, the interiors and the sounds and stuff like that. So very surface, you know, surface minded, but, um, you know, my parents actually own a butcher shop. Um, so I was raised and working in a butcher shop and I did all the cleaning. I was a cleaner boy, right? Like scrubbing the floors, cleaning the machinery. And my dad, he is super clean. He's the biggest, fussiest, cleanest butcher you'll ever meet which is you know sort of unheard of butchers are usually known to have that smelly you know okay. meaty smell Grungy, uh, that's dirty yeah yeah Got stereotypically it. right Bloody. except they have to be the cleanest place right. <laughs> legally right. um and so i was the cleaner boy so i really liked cleaning so and i really love cleaning the shop cleaning you know all the walls and just everything making the mint and that sort of i believe um, really sort of slowly stretched into cars. When I got my first car, it was a Holden Commodore, uh, a 1998 Holden Commodore. Um, Google it if you wish. And, uh, <laughs> you know, once I got that, I just really loved cleaning it, maintaining it. And, yeah, I used the turtle wax. I used all the, you know, the retail line of products. Um, and then, you know, when I decided to – and this is in a rural town of a 1,000 people, right, where I grew up in, uh, in far north Queensland um, – I had I wanted to move further down south to where I am now to do university. And when I did that, I was with my brother like, well, let's make some money, let's wash some cars and clean some cars on the side. Um, so we did that, and it was it was nowhere um, at all a business. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how we even did. It, to be honest, the the the, t- uh, the techniques and everything we were using were pretty bad. Um, and but we were just doing it for the money, right? You just had to hustle to to get the money. Um, yep. And then I actually got offered a job to work for a car detailing business. Mm. Uh, a friend said, hey, they need a, a car detailer. And um, believe it or not, um, you know, this is the business that I actually currently own now where this business, this lady who owned it, she couldn't actually physically do the work. So I came in and she, I did one day of training. Um, yep, one day. And, <laughs> and then I was officially employed as a detailer and then I was on the road as their detailer. Wow. And I, I must have been pretty good, though, because they were just in, ins and outs, you know, regulars. Um, I had a very good eye for detail, and I've learned a lot on the way. I made a lot of mistakes on my way. Um, but, you know, and so I started working for this lady who owned this business, and I was the only person in the business, except I didn't own it. Mm. Um, and it got to a point because she couldn't work because of it being she had an injury and she couldn't work due to insurance. So she ended up offering the business to me to, to, for me to buy it. So that was back in 2010. So I didn't have the money back then, so I had to um, talk to my parents and um, borrowed money off them to be able to buy the business. And so pretty much, I just took over the name and everything. There wasn't too much of a clientele. There was a few clientele, a few mm-hmm. clients. So it's gone from then, from having you know a trailer, um, a car towing a trailer, just being myself, to now um, we got up to four vans or four rigs, as wow. you guys like to call it, on the road, yeah. <laughs> um, and working out of home. My wife. You know, having to leave her full time 
uh, uh, Korea to working in our business, doing all the back end stuff, cleaning up all my mess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's usually how it works, I reckon. Yep. Um, and uh, now, you know, we, we actually got rid of one band to have three bands and uh, we have a workshop as well um, that's big enough to fit. Uh, at least five cars to be working wow. on physically working on five cars doors open everything um so just to give you an idea wow. you know how, how big it is and uh, not that size matters but for me it sort of does because when you have a bit of room to move it's great well, um, well and that's not that common there as i understand right i mean i've had correct. matt gibb on the show who's in australia uh, granted yeah, i know yeah. australia is a big country uh which i thought it was like literally the size of california and they're like no it's, <laughs> it's like big. the size of the united states um so that was yep. an embarrassing moment for me but uh also um uh grant hotry uh is down that way too and and they've both talked about that these these big you know uh, uh, car detailing centers are not that common there so to have a shop you know i think grant hotry is in a in a relatively uh, decent sized place, but you know, t- just to put it into perspe- perspective for everyone else listening again, it's like to have, to be able to work on five cars with the doors fully open and plenty of room is quite a feat just in and of itself. Right. Let alone having yeah. three additional vans on the road. Right. Yeah, that's right. And that's what we had to, that's the challenges we faced. We were completely mobile. Also working at a home, mainly from home was, uh, I had my garage set up a two car bay garage and that was set up to do, you know, machine polish and paint correction, the full details or people who never had good access to shade um, or, or whatever for us to do the car on a, at their location. That would bring it to us instead. But, you know, um, and we, we lived in an area that had like a – your neighbours weren't so close. But I still felt like this isn't right. Like I can't do this forever. Um, right. And that was just me personally, right? I'm like, I can't be vacuuming, yep. trying to, waiting till 7 o'clock in the morning for the – clock to click over to start that vacuum you know like i just didn't felt feel easy about it um and i wanted to separate from home and i knew for me personally to go to the next level like i need to get a workshop so i can separate myself from the business and grow this baby grow it so that people aren't coming to my house when i have kids i don't want them playing in the front lawn and then some guy rocking up with a car, a car saying can i get a quote you know right um, right right and that's just me you know like um and uh you know yeah our shop is quite big and it's it's not like a shed it's it's like a not that it matters but to me it sort of did it's it's a it's in a new complex it's all like tilt slabs real uh current uh, trendy in a way um but the location was real big for me too yep. and um but we had a we that's why i pulled one van off the road as well because you know we from going when you're employing staff as well like you're rate that you're happy to earn right. does i believe change when you then have to employ staff because you have to pay for all the 100%. cost of having them um and so we had to we had to um let go of some clients um you know and it sort of just happened naturally because we had to like change the way we did stuff we can't drive from one part of the city to the other we right had to, like set people different suburbs on, on the same day and it didn't suit some people and mm. And you got to do what you got to do, you know. Um, and we just knew we'd fill those spots. Um, but you know, we lose a client, and yeah, it's, it's always upsetting. And you're like, ah, oh, damn, man, I've had that client for three years, right. and everything's been great. And all of a sudden, they just dropped off, and mm-hmm. um, because of one little problem. Um, and do you feel like, like every well, time you drop a client that seemingly was like an awesome client, you end up and you're kind of bummed about it, you end up getting yeah, a client that's like ten times it better. Hurts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like sometimes you think you've had a great client and then all of a sudden you get someone who's even better. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, it's always happened to me. Always like – sometimes you don't. And and maybe, <laughs> maybe this is me just trying to see the, the good and the bad, I guess. Like always get a better client. Yeah. But it does hurt. What what was – um in uh, I think this is true, and but I could be totally wrong. It's almost like – I think that's a good base for guys to think about too. Like if you did – if you – were in an if you had an employee and you were sending him out on these jobs would would you be able to pay that employee a good amount and make money for your company right and if you can't maybe start thinking about you know raising your prices or whatever because it seems to me like and i i totally agree with you where i got to the same point too of like whoa i can't do this forever where i differed was i didn't really want to scale my detailing business i just wanted to kind of like hone down on the type of clients that I wanted. Um, 
and then get and then scale in other ways. But because it, it seemed to me like you almost have to make three times the amount that you're used to making yeah. for every employee that you employ. I mean that maybe that doesn't make sense, but like you know, if you're normal normally charging fifty bucks, say for a car, you take on an employee with all the additional added cost of that employee, you almost have to charge one hundred and fifty bucks for that same service to justify the cost of the employee insurance, everything else, right? Exactly, yeah. Like you know, we have to set targets for all our guys. Like our guys are all paid. Um, we have two full timers, full time, okay. uh, full employed. Uh, my brother works with me. My younger brother, he's like casual, uh, but he's pretty much like permanent casual, permanent part time. Yep. Um, and we have two school based trainees, so two guys who are like 17 years old, so the year 11, year 12. Uh, one of them's just finished school, literally like this week, um, and they've done a, a one day a week thing. So that'd be like assistance to myself or to our our you know trained detailers, which is really really cost effective, and they love it because they're not at school. <laughs> Got um, it. And, you know, you have to set targets. Like, you know, when I was, when I started employing people, you have your workers driving and on the road and then you do all the, do the maths, you do the figures and you made, you literally made $5 that day. And it's just like, <laughs> was that worth all the phone calls, all the headaches of trying to organize eight different clients and, you know, yep, um, 100%. and it's like, you know, we had to, we had to send out, we, we sorry, we've got about like, uh, we had about 100 regular clients uh, at one stage. That was like, you know, weekly, fortnightly, and monthly on a mm -hmm. reoccurring. And we would set them in our software uh, all throughout the year. So none of them clashed um, bookings. And, you know, we were at a point, and my wife, uh, 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 kudos to her, she she was the drive for this. Yep. And she's just like, we because for me, it's my passion. Yep. And she's just like, you can't be doing this, like, at this rate. Right. We need to actually make money and, and make a living, right? <laughs> right. Um, she's like, that's cute. Sense. You like doing it, yeah. but you made $5 <laughs> yeah. today. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, and so, you know, we had to bite the bullet and send our clients an email and I followed up with a phone call as well of us having to raise our prices. And a lot of them went from like, you know, 55 to $70 or, or uh, 45 to 65. So, so what is that? A $5 raise. Right. So I, I, that's one thing I struggle with. So can, and I think a lot of people do cause it's really it hard. Tough. So how, how, what did that like practically speaking, and I want to get into the weeds a little bit here. Yeah, sure. What did that look like? Like, or, or, or yeah. w what did your email read as? Or, and what did those phone calls like? Like, what, what did it, what was that conversation? Yeah. So it was, it took me a long time to write this email. Um, and I'm trying to see if I can actually get it up on my uh, computer here. But see, I really wanted to come across to people that it wasn't like a letter, like a, just a bulk sent letter. We sent it individually right. to everyone. Okay. So it was about their car and okay. their costs for them. Um, so it was like, you know, hi Jane, hi, hi Dave. Um, but the big thing that I got, I, I drafted it. Mm -hmm. And then one of my best mates, he's got a detailing business, shout out to him, uh, Prestige Automotive Care in Brisbane. His wife is a teacher uh. and she's great at writing stuff that actually makes sense <laughs> um and because i'm not i'm not i'm not wired that way to i have the same the problem real cool yep. lingo i have the same um, problem as you and, yep and for you know because yeah and and i'm like I, i'll just write it straight and i'll probably offend someone yep and 100%. so she was able to i got to talk to her on the phone i was like her name's joe as well and i had joe like this is what i want this is the way i'm coming from i've drafted it excuse the dodgy english um can you please make this sound the professional uh and, and you know i had people clients ringing me up um and i can i could actually send this to you so you could probably um put it oh, up yeah. whatever okay. yeah, yeah. Um, i'm happy to share it because it's so important and i had clients calling up and saying hey because most of my regular clients are business owners as well they're like did you write that letter because right. that is the best letter I've ever received. Can I use that for my clients? <laughs> wow. um, so I was just like, I thought it was a call to say, sorry, Joe, we can't do any more business with you. But out of, um, I think it was 80 clients that we had to raise or between 60 to 80 clients, mm -hmm. we only lost, I think it was three, three clients. But most of them were, it was like they were bound to leave, but this was just the tipping point for them. And a lot of it was because right. of like, we've just sold our business. 
oh, the kids are grown up now, which is true. Now we're getting them to wash it. And it's like, okay, that's a little offensive, but okay. <laughs> um, right. You know, where the 12 year olds are going to start washing the car. Right. Like, Good luck. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And so that was just a natural thing. And that, and it was never, none were on bad terms, which was great. Um, and yeah, so it's just a matter, I, we just sort of brought across, all right, this is why, you know, we have our insurances going up, our, the fuel prices are going up because well, these, these are a lot of clients who are mobile right. um, and that we want to ensure that our team are spending uh, the, the most amount of time on your car and mm-hmm. that we're not cutting corners and that this is going to help fund, you know, us putting the money back into training our staff that they're going to be trained, um, you know, ongoingly and um, and yeah, and, and people took it really, really well. I had to follow up on a lot of people like they just wouldn't reply. Right. So I had to email it again. And because we set a deadline, we gave them like a two months, I think it was. We said from the 1st of August, you know, this is going to happen. Um, please email me back and blah, blah, blah. So it was very professional, I believe anyway. Um, and it was very, very good. But I tell you what, it was scary to do. Like, yeah, you're just scared that what if I lose half of these clients? You know what? It's it- going to ruin my 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 rap. hundred percent. Right. And luckily for you, I think a lot of them are business owners. And I think the overarching thing is that most people do understand. And then at least you're putting the decision in their court and you did. I mean, you didn't raise it five bucks, but 20 bucks isn't that the end of the world. It's not like you doubled it. And one thing that we've actually talked about in the inner circle, I'm not sure if you caught onto it too, but I'm just trying to think of guys who may be in this same predicament is what you could do. Cause, and you talked about having the deadline, which, which, uh, kind of triggered this in my head is that if you are needing to raise your prices to existing clients, setting the deadline is, is a great it, idea, yeah. right? That so that is it's not phenomenal. just straight up. It's like, okay, cool. Right. I've got a month or two still left on this, right? And, and then that can give some time to make up. And also too, cause you don't, I, I, what, cause what happened was, um, Jimbo was, uh, the year before, cause we did this price rise this year, the year before we had to raise, uh, prices for about 20 clients by $5. And I called every single one and told them and, and let them know. And that was difficult. Calling them was really hard, but I found calling them was a real hit and miss cause you'd catch them when they're about to head right. into a meeting or when they're driving or the kids are screaming in the back of the car. And you could catch them on an emotional roller coaster. And so if they're having a bad day, they're just going to be like, oh, don't worry about it. See you later. Right. Okay, whatever, you know. So, um, and that only happened to one client, but it, it was just hard. And you had to do the same spiel over and over to all these clients, although they did really appreciate it. But then when right. I sent this email, it was much better because you could send it. They could have time to chew over it, chat to the other half, uh, oh. assess their finances. And um, even though, I believe communication is best on the phone. Um, for this situation, I thought email is good at first, but then if they're unsure, you can do it over the phone and they're not caught in the emotions of, whoa, what a price rise. Wow. Like, you know, and it hasn't just hit them. Um, and they're not re- getting replying back to you out of emotion. Um, that's the, I think sometimes they just need time to chew over it. Yep. Uh, it's like if there's a, I think if there's something that's happened where a, there's an unhappy client, Sometimes I think you just got to wait till the next day so mm-hmm. they have time to cool down. There's, there needs to be a cool down period. The cool, yep, yep, <laughs> um, the cool down period. <laughs> so that, because man, they, they, won't, they won't hold back sometimes. Um, right. And sometimes you might not too. <laughs> right, 100%. Um, so you, you need a cool, sometimes you need a cool down period so you can see it from different angles um, and, and, and make sure you, you do it the right way, not just out of pure anger. And, Sorry, that was a tangent. I did, yeah, I did a gym back. No, no, that was that was amazing. And I think I, I didn't quite catch, so I don't know, were a lot of these clients on like yep. monthly maintenance programs that you're raising? All, the, all of them were. Fortnightly, okay. fortnightly weekly, and gotcha. monthly. Gotcha. I did hear you say that. but every it, four weeks. Gotcha. every month is a different, I believe, you do it every four weeks. Because we have clients who are like, oh, can I get every three weeks? And I'm just like, no, sorry. We only do weekly, fortnightly, or, month, or four weekly. Because three weekly is just messy, I believe, because it will clash on a fortnightly client's booking. Uh, um, and that way, four weekly is just every set of two weeks. It's, it's there. And, and I highly recommend never do five weekly, never do three weekly. Odd uh, numbers suck. Okay, hold <laughs> on. Hold weekly. on. I'm getting – okay, okay. The terminology there is messing with me a little bit. So when Sorry. you say – no, 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 no. It's just I, I'm not following. So – you do weekly. When you say four weekly, does that mean like every four weeks? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Got sorry. it. Okay. No, no, no. It's fine. I just, like I said, I love, 
I love it. I just so want to make every sure four weekly. So every four weeks, we we cost us our monthly detailing. Okay, got it. Gotcha. Yeah, because it's easy to program that into a booking software. Yes. Um, and that way, if they want, they want six o'clock every month in the right. morning or seven seven a.m. It's not going to clash with um hundred you know like a yeah mm -hmm. like if they're three weekly it's not even clash with a two weekly client and obviously um your fortnightly clients can potentially clash with your monthly but um your four weekly but it's <laughs> no no it's fine now that i got it i so so yeah. every four weeks versus your monthly clients how does that will clash every once in a while that's what you're saying Sorry, no. <laughs> um, I'm slow, so bear that. with me. It's not Your, you, uh, my it's me. Clients, uh, every four weeks. Got it. That's Same what thing. I'm trying to say. Okay. Yeah. Everyone's like, it's just Jimbo, easier to, to program them. Right. No, 100%. And I think, you know, that's a big uh, cornerstone to the detailer inner circle as well. And it sounds like you have it nailed down is like, if you can lock in your schedule like that, that's really how you can grow and scale and, and kind of really get it dialed in because you can, you have income that you can rely on essentially, right? Because whether you're getting paid at the time of service or automatically billing them is kind of irrelevant. The point is, is that you got something on the books and you got something on the books consistently. Well, that's it, yeah. Yeah, and we try to build a culture of like, you know, um, we value our clients, but we want them to value our time too. Because when you have full time staff, a great point. they decide to cancel an hour before they're booking. It's like, well, I, I can't just magically pop a car in there. Sometimes I can. Sometimes we can shuffle things around. Sure. But we try to build that our time's valuable just as much as yours. And, you know, we got staff and we pay all our guys properly. Yeah. And we want to keep it like that. Mm -hmm. um, and not just pay them per job because that's just not right. And you can get in big trouble <laughs> right. doing that. Um, and, and you know, if you, I, I believe if you look after your staff, they will look after you and, yep. um, or they should feel inclined to, you know, totally. Um, yeah. So and I doing, think they do when you set that, big thing. when you set that boundary with your clients, I think that happens. Right. And then they, it, it it gets talked quite a lot about, but I, but the practical aspect of it, like we just did, I don't think does is like when you actually lay down the groundwork of how you operate your business, clients kind of will conform to that. And then everyone's extremely clear on how you operate and you're delivering a service mm. to them. Right. And they want that service and yep. they just need to be trained on. And it's not about being a jerk or being an ass or anything like that, because you could do it in a proper way. Right. Of just like, hey, look, I got, yeah. you know, overhead and it's convenient for you when I come to your house. Right. Well, because of that, like, yep. I got to raise the prices because gas is going up and and you're not being a jerk about it. You're just you're being honest and transparent with them. Right. And I think that exactly, done in the yeah. right way, like it sounds like you have really can can uh, make a client for life and really kind of even cement that relationship. I forgot one thing. Yeah. Um, and what I did do in this email, we made a guarantee that there would be no price rises uh, until, uh, until January, 2020. That was Got it. A, a kicker too. If they lock into so, the program now, cause that's what I was going to say yeah. too is, is one thing. And that's why I asked about where all these people on the maintenance programs. Cause I thought, an option that you could do is if people weren't on a maintenance program, I guess this is for everyone listening. If they're not on a, on a main uh, maintenance program, a fourth weekly or however you guys say it there once a month or whatever, <laughs> uh, you can, that's a way to encourage people to lock into a maintenance program and say, Hey, look, my prices are going up. This is what my prices are going to be. You can lock in this rate, right? If you go on a monthly yeah, maintenance yeah. thing, which yeah. But go on. Sorry. But I think like if you've got a good relationship with your clients, um, it doesn't mean you've got to be hanging out with them. It's just you give them a call, you chat to them, you get along well with them. I think that's the biggest thing. It's like if they don't like you personally, they're not going to want to use you. Um, I think that's a lot because it is such a relational. Every service-based business is relational, 100%, I believe. 100%. Yeah. Um, and, and when you do do a price rise, they're like, yeah, I get that, Joe. You know, I understand you haven't raised your price on me for two years or three years or four years. And, oh, you guys do a good job. And they're not going to suggest raising the prices. <laughs> They'll right. try and get the cheapest prices for as long as they can. That's just normal. Um, and so when it comes to the price, it's like, oh, that sort of sucks. But it's only $10 extra and, you know, it's worth I see what you guys do. It's great. And, um, and you know, you got to look after yourself. Because, um, you know, our guys – 
you know, we pay them from when they leave our workshop in the van, driving around. So we have to make the route so crisp and like one car after the other, very small driving distances, um, you know, or we had to factor into the, the client's cost that, you know, okay, well, you live out here and no one else is out there. So that will incur a, a higher fee unless you can get a friend that's close to you that wants their card done as well. Right. So that was always a good draw card. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when we, we set targets for our guys, hey, you by the end of the week, you need to be earning $55 an hour. But for me to be able to give them that, that target, if I'm getting them to do cards worth $45 for an hour, that I'm setting them up to lose. Mm. And it's just, they're not going to be able to win unless they're upselling. And, and But you can only upsell regular clients so much um, if they're already right. doing it all. Um, and yeah, so I had to make sure we got to fix this because I'm, I'm the problem here. I'm having mm. to raise prices and I want my guys to work their butts off to do something that's probably only I could do mm-hmm. <laughs> when you're the boss, you know? Right. Like um, you can work that bit faster because you just got that drive. Sure, um, right. Because you're the owner, you're, it's your it's your baby, mm-hmm. um, and you'll do anything for your baby uh, most of the time. Um, of so um, yeah, so we did that, and that's really helped our guys. We've actually raised the targets for the guys because we've got things down to a really good pattern, um, and it's worked out way. So I, I'm a big believer in systems. We have you know checklists, mm-hmm. um, you know, on for each job for when they finish work that everything's checked off that they've done everything for that day that they've done all that the checklist checking whether or not they've done the checklist for that day. You know what I mean? Like yep. you have to do that because there's a lot going on and people do forget. Like that, that's sure. just what it comes down to. Um, yeah. What does what does the monthly maintenance package look like? Yep. So when we do our regular services, uh, so obviously some clients, so we have a few cars that, you know, take a lot longer than other cars because they just get their cars a lot dirtier than other clients. <laughs> so they would, might be on a different package in a way that's sort of tailored to their car but majority of uh, the regular clients consist of like an exterior wash clean up in the wheel arches the, the door jams clean the wheels inside the, the the wheel wells with like the wheel woolies um you know obviously dry the car down use uh, a, a drying aid or a wax to dry the car with mm-hmm. uh and then clean the inside it's like a, a express vacuum like a, yep. a good a, a nice vacuum mm-hmm. but um not crazy you know yep um uh, unless they really need it but see if cars just come back from a holiday and it's really expensive we train our guys to let the client know before you start hey today i can spend an extra 20 minutes it's going to cost an extra x amount are you happy for me to do that to get it up to the standard Got um, it. because it needs more time and and so with to have that good communication nearly every time the client's like yeah sure can you do whatever you need to do um so yeah so we use um, uh, products just clean down the interior mm-hmm. um, and, and the glass, the glass every time. Mm-hmm. Uh, deodorize the car, or it wipe out the door jams. Uh, and yeah, so it's just looking for some cars, there's hardly any dirt in there. Like it's right. really clean. But you've got to look for the dirt. Like you don't just wipe away. You've got to look for the dust right. um, and those hot spots, you know, above the steering wheel, yep. in the drink holders, uh, between the seats. Um, you know, where the elbow goes. So yeah, so like, it's just a nice tidy, tidy down. And most cars around the hour to an hour and 15 yep. minutes. Yep. And what do you charge if, if you don't mind sharing? Yeah. Yeah. So most cars, like small cars are around $65. That is, that has to be my favorite business model. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's in, it's out. Do you require like a certain car minimum? Per stop, if you're going mobile, or it would well, you see take most one of our car? mobile jobs only have one or two cars. Got it. Okay. But like I said, we've been able to um, service our clients where they're only five a five minute, ten minute drive apart. Gotcha. So okay. So and we try to make everything as efficient as possible. You yep. know, like for the setup and pack down, yep. and that's where like your assistants come in, like someone from school, they can come in. They're the guys that are on seven dollars an hour, yep. eight dollars an hour, which is very uh, low in Australia. I think yep. our wages are higher than yours because we don't do so. the tipping, right? Um, and uh, you know, so so they're the guys that will set up the hose, we'll we'll ro- reel out the pressure cleaner, we'll we'll set mm-hmm. up the power lead and get the products out and get everything organized while the, our detailer talks to the client, does the communication, the gotcha. selling, and, and gets the keys and drives the car. Gotcha. <laughs> not, the, not the young guy. Right, um, right. And so you can shave off 20 minutes of doing the car. Um, totally. You know, where they're doing it 
uh, like a regular clean in 35 minutes, you know, because okay. the, the, the young guy, he's on doing the wheels, yep. um, and, and hosing down yep. while rinsing while the, the, our main detailer is, is washing the car, if that makes sense with the, totally. the wash mitt. Yeah, it does. And then yeah, they're packing yes. up as the detailer goes and collects the money. Exactly. Yeah, yep. exactly. Love Cause that. you know, you got to wait for people like, you know, you talk about with the officers, Oh, sorry, Jenny's in a meeting. Can yeah. you wait five minutes? The worst. It's like, no, I can't wait. Five I can't. Minutes. <laughs> right, right, right. That's when I started collecting payment up front. It's like, you know what? Ex- too well, many that, things yeah, happen. Exactly. You know? So how many this this team of two, on average, how many cars like what's a goal average what's a goal of how many yeah. cars they could hit a day? Well, um, you know, I think like doing eight cars a day is okay. good. Um, cause there's just a lot of setting up and packing up and you go through a lot of drying towels. Yep. Um, you know, uh, so, uh, and driving back yeah, and forth, so, even if it's five or 10 minutes, I mean, that adds up. Right. So yeah, yeah, exactly. But like, yeah, like if they're not in not many locations, two people can knock out a lot of cars, but you know, we try not to do like 20 cars in one day. Cause, um, you know, they, they, I think there is a time where during the day that people sort of, uh, decline their their passion for you know their yep. speed everything sort of go, dies down and yep. uh, and if you're out in the sun and it's pretty hot and um, it's taxing. yeah yeah and you got to work around everyone else's um, schedule as well where clients have school pick up and but majority of our regular clients are in the mornings everyone loves six thirty a.m. got it you know eight o'clock and um, yeah so and also to an Lords of club we say hey look you know when you do this every month we'll clean the engine bay. Every month we'll shampoo the two front seats or the two carpets, whatever is needed. Um, that's all included. Um, and we just do little extra things like if the headlights are looking a bit bad, we'll do it for free. Like it's just to – and let them know. Let them you're know. So you're so spot on. You're so spot on. And I know – Don't do it without telling them. <laughs> right. Well, of course, right? And that, But that I think that's where a lot of guys or a lot of people will freak out is like, what do you mean you're going to do it for free? And it's like – Dude, it you, takes two minutes. It, it takes, takes five minutes. Yeah, you're there so <laughs> frequently. It's like, it's not, it, it, I think they think like, oh, it's going to be like a horrendous mat to shampoo if you do it. It's like, you've been you've been cleaning it monthly for like the past two years. Like, it's not going to be that bad, right? Because right exactly. before it starts to get bad, you're there on the maintenance cleanup, right? And so I think that, ugh, I just love that. I think that is such a good model that um, guys could follow and, and make a very, very nice living doing, you know, it's a very mm. low, uh, fee for the client, you know, 65 yeah. bucks is, and I would preface it as like a mini detail or an express detail, yeah, exactly, not, yeah. not like a car wash because that's an expensive car wash, but a very cheap mini detail. Right. And yeah. we know it, yeah. it's a glor. I call it the glorified car wash. Right. It's like, cause it's yeah. basically a car wash, but you're spending a little extra time. You know? Yeah, exactly. And right. you get the people that say, oh, how much for a car wash? Right. Can you do mine next? <laughs> right. And um, that's just expect. That's part of the job. You know? <laughs> people will come up and say that. And uh, we do what we, what I know you've recommended, Jimbo, which I think is spot on. And not everyone understands this, is that when you quote people, you can't give them a fixed price. Right. Or you will run into hurdles. Then. You've got to give them a buffer. Yeah. And uh, or worst case scenario, worst case scenario, it's going to cost two hundred and twenty dollars. But I would presume anywhere between you know one hundred and fifty to two twenty. Yeah. Even if it's a hundred dollar gap, it, you're only protecting yourself. And if 100%. they're not happy with that over the phone, sometimes I just question, mm, what are they going to be like? <laughs> yeah, they're really not going to be happy in person. <laughs> exactly. Because um, so you don't weird. have fixed expenses when you're detailing a car. Like you right. don't use a certain. Like it all depends on how dirty it is. That's a great um, point. Yep. And, that, that's uh, a great point to even tell the customer because a lot of pushback I'll get is like, well, how come? Why, why, why a hundred dollar uh, gap? And it's like, well, yeah. you know, I may use more chemical if your carpet's dirtier, or I may use more soap or carpet shampoo, or just more, I may use more resources if your car's dirtier, which costs more money. You know, like there's yeah. so many ways that you could play it off, but I actually think that's one that like a customer would think about and be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And, um, you know, especially when they ask our staff, uh, when they ask our detailers for quotes, and they don't really feel too comfortable with, like, mm. giving out quotes to people. So we just say that they would just, Sam would just say, hey, how about you give Joe a call at the office or, right. or just give the office a call? Because I'm not always, I'm on the tools and running the office as well at the moment. Um, mm. and, and that way it all comes through head office because if, if Sam gives a quote, 
this guy might call back three months later and just say, oh, I talked to one of your guys and he said this and they'll probably get it all mixed up. Um, so if you have everything running through one channel um, mm-hmm. and Sam could come back and give me the notes and you know of, of what happened right. so that I'm pretty good at remembering people. I yep. don't remember their name, but I remember the situation or their car. Right. <laughs> it's yeah. just because I'm, I'm scarred from it. Um, <laughs> I'm the same way. It's it. like, your name's what? It's like, oh, okay. You live where? Hmm. Okay. What was your car? Ah, yeah, I got it. Now yeah. I know who you are. <laughs> you had that car full of dog hair. I remember you. <laughs> right. Yeah, you could tell them like the most intricate detail of their car, but like no idea what their name is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And um. And you know. And people, people. I reckon people. People love that that you remember their car. I think so. Unless you remember them. You know. Right. That's um, true. Yeah. But uh. But like you know, it's the whole journey's been interesting. Like we've had a lot of, um. You know, I like. You gotta sort of, you gotta make friends. You gotta, mm-hmm. uh, you can't do it alone. You gotta surround yourself with other businesses, have joint ventures, mm. um, you know. And whereas it gets really hard to run your business mm-hmm. when you're just against everyone. Like I find businesses, there's some businesses that can just, you know, rubbish other detailing businesses, and it's just not healthy. I just don't think it helps the industry at all. I think I know you talk about this a lot, which is great when people just rubbish each other for no reason, just so they can get more business, obviously. It's crazy. That's a, it's not a bad, it's not a good formula right. to, to achieve that. But like we, I have another detailer that, you know, he's an older guy. He just does mainly in the ins and outs. And we get people that that's just all they want. And I can't fit them in because they want it done two hours ago. Um, and I'll say, hey, how about you give Andrew a call? Here's his number. And he always flicks because he doesn't do any correction work. So anyone that wants to buy a new car, he flicks them to me and he'd say, hey, give Joel a good call. Yeah. He's a really good detailer. And um, I always try to fit in everyone. Like, um, you know, I, I don't like letting clients mm. go because um, we try to, you know, for us, if they come to our workshop, if they're mobile and all our mobile services are fully booked out, uh, we say, hey, how about you bring your car to us? And because you, you wanted us to come to you, we'll give you 10% off if you bring your car to us. And it still works out just as profitable because then you're not paying for someone to drive out to them. Right. So do you have Does your, that make sense? Yeah, totally. So do you pretty much have your mobile vans booked out like five, however many days a week you work like every day well, and that's um, kind of the maintenance stuff and then the shops for like correction stuff or how does that, what does that yeah, look like? Yeah. So, so since we are very well known on the coast to be a mobile business, even though we've adjusted our website so it shows that we're mobile and we have a workshop, um, still a lot of people think we're mobile. So we've been um, really, because we've only had the workshop for two years now, um, we've been really trying to push and like build a culture of people knowing that we are the, the workshop and that our mobile service mm. um, is sort of like an add-on. So we flipped it. it in a way. Um, so a lot of our regulars are mobile, but we also get people that want the full interior detail. We call it our intense interior detail where mm-hmm. they want the sham- the carpets and seats shampooed, extracted. And, um, you know, we do everything mobile except for machine polishing. I just find for me personally, yep. it's just much easier to do it in the shop because you're not one having to take every compound and pad right. and machine combo right. yep. in a van and you get to a house and it's like, yeah, we have a garage. Oh, but it's filled full of crap yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's covered in dust on the floor. And then, you know, well, there's no lighting. And um, cause we have Volkswagen caddies. Okay. Um, you might need to Google that because I don't think you have them in the U S they're a Volkswagen. Obviously they're like a small short wheelbase van. Yeah. Um, it's probably similar to like the Fiat. I think a Fiat have a version. I wish, I, I wish we had those. So the closest thing for people listening is like a Ford transit connect. Um, yeah. where it's like, again, a lot, kind smaller. Of a lot smaller, like that, almost like a good. sedan. They look, they look nice. They look more, way, way more better. Level. Yes. Especially they, with that Volkswagen badge. <laughs> yes. They look way better. Think of like a, uh, for people in the States, think of like a Tiguan or a, yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. like a Tiguan. A <laughs> yeah. A big oh, golf. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, there you go. Like a Volkswagen golf, but with a cargo back. <laughs> exactly and these vans like we haven't done, we've just got nice alloys and ours alloy wheels but you can slam these vans you can do so much to them and yep. just pimp them out they do it more in the, in the uk not so much australia because everything costs a lot of money in australia um and uh but they're presentable so yeah so we do um do a lot of just one-off detailing like new clients mm. you know where they want uh just a really thorough clean inside and out 
um, but we do all our uh, machine polishing and we get a lot of our full details, like the pre-sale details where we yep. do a, you know, a paint enhancement and do all the intense interior work on the inside here at our workshop. Gotcha. Um, Cause it's just, you got everything. It's just much better. It's yeah. bigger. You got complete shade. The wash bay is inside our workshop, um, you know, and yep. you got everything set up ready to rumble. So do you try to have them like, say you get a new client, they need a full detail inside and out, whatever. Or, or a yeah. more intensive detail. How about that? So do you yeah. have them come to the shop, you do that, and then do you try to upsell on the maintenance yeah. package? Yep. You know, you, you just get some clients that you know are never interested in maintenance detailing. Totally. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, and sometimes you're like, I really don't want to do that kind on of a regular basis anyway. <laughs> right. 100%. Yep. Um, or my, my staff will never forgive me if I do. Yep. But, yep. Um, you know, yeah. So we always try to say, hey, like at least – uh, you know, we start with a, uh, you know, how about we you come back once every six months, you know, and get this done, or we can gotcha. actually do your car on a fortnightly or a monthly basis, especially if they're just trying to sell a car. We'll then say, hey, are you buying a new car? And then they say yes, and we talk about protecting the car, mm. tinting it, you know, coating it, rust proofing, all that kind of stuff, um, and then find out where they live. And be like, hey, we actually service your area, and we do, you know, uh, regular detailing, and you know, you get that nice new car, you want to keep it feeling and looking nice all the time mm. I'll let us do it you know especially if they've had a great experience with you already um and they might not some people would like to just maintain their car and they get that new car um syndrome where they'll maintain it for the first two months and after that they just forget about it um, right and or after maybe six months you know it sort of dies off and the car just gets the intervals between them cleaning it get longer and longer until they just never do it right. um so yeah it's, it's good to try and get them in when they have that high of the new car. Um, you got to get them on that emotional high, I believe. Um, so they see the value in it. But yeah, so a lot of guys have jumped onto our, our loyalty club because they were a once-off client. You know, mm. They were, um, they brought it in and, and got uh, the ceramic coating done. Um, and we said, hey, let, let us maintain this for you. And yeah, we've, we've really been able to do that. And so you got to market to your old clients, your, your current clients, which I know you talk about a lot in the detailing inner circle, which is great. Yep, yep. And uh, thank you for being a member of that, by the way. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's really good because, um, yeah, like, you know, it, it's applied for detailers, which is great. Right, definitely. Um, what else? So what What do you, where are you hoping to take as we kind of look towards 2019? Yeah. And by the time this episode comes out, uh, it's going to be even closer to 2019. What kind of cool. has what are you kind of focusing on whether in your detailing business or, or products or whatever, what's kind of either exciting you or what kind of has your eye, what's the goals for 2019 or not, you know, have to tell me all your goals, but like, you know, what are you, what are you looking forward to in, in 2019? That's going to help what yeah, you already sure. have going on. Sounds like you have a phenomenal so, business going on, by the way. Like I, <laughs> I really hope people focus on the things that you've said, because honestly, like, you seem like you have a phenomenal business model going on that I think is could be extremely helpful to a lot of people out there. Yeah, and and before I do talk uh, answer your question, Jim, I've got to say like it's not easy. Like right. you have to work hard. You got to work more hours than anyone else in your t in your team. Mm -hmm. um, and or else you, you know you gotta you gotta be hungry for it to be able to get to a level. And you know for some guys it's just it's happened for them and it's, and that's awesome. Where it's just been easy for them. And man, like. Go you. That is not that me. is insane. You know. <laughs> right, yeah, right, yeah. right, right. But it's no, running your own business is not easy. And when you have a workshop, it's even harder because you have just constant overheads, um, and you have to be getting people through the door. You have got to improvise. You have got to innovate. Um, so uh, look, I'm really excited for next year because in a workshop, um, you know, my wife has she has a hair salon upstairs, right? Uh, we've got it fitted out to be a hair salon. We've got storage area oh. in the back. Like we've got a mezzanine. And um, so she does hair clients on the side or the clients that pull her around. But because yeah. we've had a baby, um, she had to sort of put that on the back bench because, you know, she's yeah. going to feed a little little fella. Um, and, um, you know, so we're fitting it all upstairs to have another office and a smaller storage area so that, you know, she can be more at the workshop and um, bring our uh, young boy here mm. and, and also help with the office. And so that will be a big, massive uh, move forward that we have another office upstairs so we can just have meetings with potential clients um you know have a good area to do that uh and just for the business in general to move to the next level of uh, being more professional um 
and having her back in the industry. So that's just something small on the side. But mm -hmm. um, next year, like, you know, we are dabbling more into PPF, which is okay. very difficult to do. Um, and something I'm, I'm very keen to learn. Uh, and no one really on the Sunshine Coast does it. I think there's only one other business mm -hmm. and they do a great job at it. But there's the Sunshine Coast is a holiday destination. There's a lot of business on the sunny coast. Mm -hmm. Not many people know about PPF. Like the, the search rate on Google is very low, but it is slowly growing. Um, and so we want to be known as the, the business that gets it out there for, for say, our yeah, city. Seems like a good time to get in. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you Google PPF Sunshine Coast or paint protection film or clear bar, like nearly nothing comes up. Mm. Um, and so I was like, great, there's an avenue for me to move into, right? Yep. Um, but yeah, so it's just, you know, we want to be able to have, in 2019, I want to have a full-time detailer here at a workshop um, that doesn't go anywhere. That is our full-time detail. And I wouldn't mind building a relationship with a dealership and doing mm. dealership work. That's what I want to aim towards. It's just good bread and butter, rainy day. We don't have snow here. Right. <laughs> um, Me either. So, you know, uh, yeah, exactly. Right. Rainy so, day. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Right. right. You know, you have that bread and butter work come through. And, you know, I know you've talked about it a lot. Dealership can dealerships can have that bad vibe about it where you know you're you 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 know flogged by a slave driver sure. doing work for nothing but that's not necessarily true you can work 100%. out well it's just yep. all about relationship um yeah so you know just moving forward and you just got to constantly be innovating you just can't you can't just not learn you can't just be stagnant or else people will just take over like people there's always car detailing businesses starting up people who are keen to to do it um and uh, if you don't innovate, you'll get eaten, you know? I agree. I love your 72-hour guarantee. And people will know yeah, what that yeah. is so if you go good. to his website. <laughs> so that's because, you know, when people want their car done, and they especially they want it mobile, yep. they're like, oh, but you, you have the 72-hour guarantee. And it's like, sure, if they beat me to it, right? And I said, well, you bring your car to our workshop, you know, even if they want that showroom detail done, the full detail, like, we can't fit that in, but we can still do your car, but do a small service. You know, so you still have that guarantee. So it's not, you know, um, they want to get their caravan full mm. polished. Like, man, that takes three days, <laughs> right? Right. right. Um, sometimes, depending on on uh, what you're doing. But sure. um, uh, or motorhome. I know you guys do a lot of motorhomes over there. I just yep. don't think we have them as much here. Um, you know, and so having a guarantee, that point of difference, the seven two hour guarantee is really good because people know that. Cool, I can get my car cleaned it within three days. Mm. Totally. That's how they think. It's um, a, he's not going to be booked out three weeks. Right, you know? which I think is a hor People use that as a bragging statement, you know, and I think it's horrible. <laughs> but, like, it is, it is, it is, and I can't understand it because, see, every city's different, though. Like, I have a close friend of mine. He's down in Adelaide. It's like a car crazy city in Australia. It's all stranded down by itself in the bottom of Australia, right? Mm -hmm. And my mate, um, Nathaniel, um, he has perfection automotive detailing. He has not paid one cent on advertising, Jimbo. Never ran an ad. Ha, like just got a website that he made for free mm. and he's booked out generally two to three weeks. <laughs> Word of mouth is how that wow. city survives. It is incredible. And I'm just like, bro, how do you do this? Like I, I spend so much money. Um, <laughs> and he's right? like, I'm That's like, you true. should. Yeah, yeah. And it's just different. And yeah, he's by himself though. Like, you know, sure. it's his own thing. So it's a different business model. Um, but man, that word of mouth in some places, it's just seriously mm -hmm powerful uh and it's not it, word of mouth is big up here but man people i don't know just people are different yeah <laughs> the, something's in the water maybe i don't know <laughs> maybe right man this has been amazing if people and i i hesitate to say this because i think you're going to get bombarded with people but if people want to contact you find you uh how can they yeah, sure. how can they do that and maybe call you pick your brain maybe if they're yeah. in australia my audience isn't huge down there but but there definitely is some it's pockets. Um, what is that? How can they get a hold of you? Sure. So um, they can send me an email if they wish. Um, it might go into my junk box because that'd be coming from the US if, if there's anyone does decide to email me. But I, I do always check my junk box. So that is at Joseph. So J O S E P H at cleangetaway.com.au. So Joseph at cleangetaway.com.au. Or they can. Uh, go to our Facebook page, Clean Getaway Car Detailing. Uh, there are a few Clean Getaway Car Detailing. I think there's one in America as well that I mentioned to you uh, earlier before the podcast. So yeah. just make sure you look for the one on the Sunshine Coast in Australia. Uh, and yeah, message me on there. I'll, I always get back to people 
like within 24 hours easy um so yeah nice. find me that way probably be a bit expensive calling me <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but you could call on just skype message me and we can take from there <laughs> yeah right yeah, exactly skype yeah, is free. Yeah. i don't even know my skype a, a name <laughs> as, as we as we experienced <laughs> most people don't so that actually you yeah. were like the smoothest person ever to get on skype if if people do search clean car yeah clean getaway car detailing queensland queensland uh you're the first person that pops up and i just look for the yeah cool I just look for the dot com dot au. That'll but yeah, you're exactly, all over yeah. if you add Queensland in there and it looks like Warana, maybe your exact yeah, city. Yeah. That's yeah, that's just our suburb on suburb. the Sunshine Coast. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, man. I appreciate you so much. And before we end the recording, is there any uh any last thing you want to add there? Oh mate, you got me now. Um no, I just think just keep learning and, and be open to what people have to tell you. Like just don't close people off and just be open and yeah, be willing to learn and, and get to know other people in the industry. That's probably one of the best things I've done mm. is open my horizon, expand my horizon and get like, get to listen to you, not be held up in, <laughs> I don't need to listen to anyone, you know, listen to other people, hear it from a different lens, see it from a different lens. And, you know, um, and yeah, that's all I've really got to say today. Thanks so much awesome, for this man. opportunity, Jimbo. 